Greetings from Manipur to all my brothers and sisters in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, I've always been blessed to be a part of this CFC fellowship through Zoom meeting over this uh, last um, month, last few months. I've been, uh, I've been part of uh, this fellowship and uh, God has given me today another opportunity to share with you all and I remain grateful to all, especially the elders of our CFC Mumbai and especially our brother, Matthew Thomas, uh, for he just talked out last uh, few days back that if I could take the time over here. And as I was praying for the youth, and it was uh, actually that I've been going through in my life and I was prompted to share my experience of my Christian walk towards my journey of fulfilling of God's purpose in my life through his calling. <clears throat> and, uh, and it has been like this, that uh, we've been going through many things in my life and in this, in this aspect of uh, calling, which is, uh, which is the one of the purpose for fulfilling the God purpose. So it all begins with God. <clears throat> If God did not call us, we have no relationship with him. And before being saved, uh, it was in the prime time of my youth, that was during my college years, the final year, I had met the most terrible incidents of my life over a car accident when three of my friends lost their life and while other got injured. Consequently, what happened, I had to defend over a motor vehicle accident claim case for a compensation of huge amount of money in a tribunal court. And thereon, I had developed a lot of psychological problems. And uh, there was a bitterness in my heart and which needed me to go somewhere to a, a seclusive environment. So I took a job as a science teacher in a Christian mission residential school in one of the hill districts of Manipur. And so it was at this place, I began seeking for the one true God that can hear my prayer and deliver me from all the trouble. As a non-Christian, I had uh, many gods before me. So I was asking who was one true God that can answer my prayer. Then it came from the book of Isaiah, the very Bible that I got from a friend. And from that verse, it says, I have called you by your name, though you have not known me. I am the Lord and there is no God beside me. And it was uh, something very special that very day when I read this verse that God had called me by my name even before I had knew him. So I started wondering the God of the Bible from that day on. And today when I came to the Roman chapter 8, verse 29, which read like this, For whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, and moreover, whom he did predestine them, he also called, and whom he called them, he also justified, and whom he justified them, he also glorified. So through the leading of the Holy Spirit, I was convicted of my sin and led to repentance and confession to God all my sin, and thereafter I accepted Jesus as my Lord and my Savior, and I got my assurance of salvation in the Luke chapter 5, verse 20. Then it was something very exciting what happened that when we come to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, it says that God has chosen you to salvation. And it was never your choice. It was never my choice. I realized that such a great call in my life was not by my goodness or, my, or by my work, but according to his purpose and grace that uh, I had received this blessing of the Lord. So many people, if they fail to realize it, then they don't deserve this grace. So when I realized that God had called me for this salvation, right before the foundation of this world, I was so indeed blessed. And Paul say in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, God has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our work, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given in Christ Jesus before the world began. So it is uh, very much clear that God calls us for salvation. God calls us that 
we come to his saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and we are saved from sin. And then what happened in my life after this call, I felt that it was almost over, but it happens in this way. When I came to another verse in the Roman chapter eight, uh, this verse that we read, our destination is not only to be saved or not only to be justified, but also to be glorified in our Lord Jesus Christ, as we read in Romans chapter 8, 29. So my response to the previous call to salvation, there was another call that I need to pursue, which is called higher calling. <clears throat> as a believer in Jesus Christ, we all are being called from this wall of darkness to come into his marvelous light in the kingdom of God. So after being saved, if you have really never discovered your calling, or never discover the purpose why God saved you, you will miss the most important things of the Lord for eternity. As we understand that the purpose of life is the God's original intentions of his creation, and that's the reason why we live to this day. So a call is an invitation of God so that we walk in his will and fulfill the purpose why God saved you, why God brought you to this world. So the moment when we receive this call, it starts to impact the whole life and our destiny is driven by the grace of God to fulfill the God purpose when we receive it and respond to it and move unto it with faith. So most of us might have gone through in life praying and seeking to know the God's calling. And the, the very question that came to my life was, how do I know the God's calling? How do I step out to fulfill his purpose in our life, in my life that actually that happens? So till now, I have been praying over it, but it happens that it is never uh, it depend upon the age, whether I'm young or old. It never depends upon the gender, whether you are a male or a female or the situation that I am not yet ready to receive the call of God. Because without knowing your God's calling, uh, we are just aimlessly drifting from one place to another or from one job to another. Though we may be moving forward, but we are not arriving to any destination what God intends to bring through us. So when we don't pursue this calling, we spend our life wishing we were somebody else. And sometimes we are not very happy of what we are. We feel like we want to be that person or we want to be this person. And it actually happened that <clears throat> we uh, often face a lot of problems in our life because we are not ourselves and we are not satisfied ourselves. But the book of Psalm, uh, if we read in 139 verse 14, it says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Each one of us is a unique in our creation. God has created us uniquely. And so the, our calling is also very unique. It is very different from me, uh, God's calling. And it may be different to other brothers and sisters who are here. God's calling will be completely different from one to another. So when we are feeling, in, why we are feeling insignificant, sometimes we are feeling ourselves very lowly. We are not that person or we are not that person. It's because we are missing the calling. Actually, we do not know what is our calling. So we are called by God. If you read in the book of uh, Romans chapter 1 verse 7, to be separated and made holy unto God uh, to be the holy one, the saint. And if you read in the first Corinthians 1, 9, uh, he called us to, he called us so that we may enter into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. These are the primary callings that we have been uh, having the masses from many of our senior brothers who say that we have to walk in the manner worthy of the calling to which we have been called in the book of Ephesians chapter four, verse one. So the primary callings is that we are to fulfill, to live a holy life. And also at the same time, we have to be uh, uh, continuously have fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ to grow in his likeness. But now what we are discussing here is, this, is the another specific calling of living out where God has his purpose in each individual life. Uh, for, for example, in my life, what God intend me to be when he saved me, when he delivered me. So uh, most of the time we have limited God's calling to a professional ministerial occupation like uh, pastors, elders, or a song leaders, or a preacher, or a teacher. 
something like we limit our ministry uh, only to the ministerial occupation. But in Colossians chapter 1, verse 30, it says that the kingdom of darkness, we are called out unto his kingdom, that is from kingdom of darkness to light, that every Christian profession are the work of the kingdom activities. Means we are uh, in that profession, wherever we are, we are glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ and we are in his kingdom ministry and whatever we do, we do it in the glory of the Lord. So uh, if you read in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, for we are the God workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good work which God prepared in advance for us to do. So such may be our calling. Uh, last time I had a global leadership seminar in our Manipur uh, before the lockdown. And we had a, uh, one of the topics we had about calling in different parts of the ministry. For example, like calling in vocation. Vocation is uh, about a job or in occupations or in profession or any kind of employment. Where if you are called as a doctor, if you are called as an engineer or a teacher or a police officer, in that calling, when we minister for the Lord's glory, we, we, uh, we build up the kingdom of God. That is his purpose when God calls us to a, call in a vocation. Then there is a calling in ministry. Most of us has uh, understanding about a calling in the ministry, uh, a ministry like hospital ministry. People come for the prayer of the sick and uh, diseased people. Then we have a literature and track ministries where people come and they pray, they write books, they bring tracts, and they witness to the people. We have others like digitals and TV ministry, where most of the programs uh, we see in the TV, in televisions, and other social media, where they bring the word of God. And such other ministries, like which uh, involved orphanage, or which involved uh, women ministry, and youth ministry, or children ministry. Then we have a calling in gift. Uh, people have a different callings, like a, a gift of teaching is a, a calling and gift, prophecy, or a leadership, or uh, doing miracles, or healing. These are the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives upon the believer, and they are called to minister with this gift. And then we have another uh, calling, and the calling in speciality. There is a competent skills and knowledge. Suppose a person is a very good uh, YouTuber or a a good editor, he edits the uh, visual uh, television, uh, uh, whatever the video that we have, and he try to make it a very good uh, editing of that video that brings the word of God to many parts of the globe, and that itself uh, help us to build the kingdom of God. Then we have uh, various types of ministry in which we can reach out to the people and do the kingdom ministry. And today I'll be sharing how I discovered my own calling that pertain to the fulfillment of God's purpose in my life. And among those calling, for me in my life, I had a, a various uh, struggle. And later on, I came to understand that through the leading of the Holy Spirit, which I will be sharing today, that I was called for the alcoholic and drug addicts people. And it happens that, uh, that this kind of ministry, I never had in my understanding or never had in my desire that I would be going to minister among the drug addicts or among the alcoholic. The calling deals uh, with how you serve or where you walk or what is your role in your life or whether it is in the society, in the family, in the church. So I'm going to specify and share with my experience about a calling in certain uh, parts of God's purpose where God saved me so that I can uh, minister upon these people where he has already predestined for my uh, life that I may bring glory to the God Almighty. So it happens that I had to had certain priorities to see that I will confirm about this calling. One was which I have been continuously hearing from the God's uh, senior servant, godly people, they used to advise me to wait and pray before the Lord. So I got two concepts when I started praying about my ministry, uh, about my calling. One it came was, waiting for the God's time. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31, it says to wait unto the Lord. So what happened when we wait unto the Lord? It's something that dramatically happened. Uh, since it is a call of God, we need his grace and strength 
to accomplish his mission. So as we wait unto the Lord, he takes away our strength and replace by his, his own strength. And often in my life and in the life of many people, if you have experienced that there is a conflict of will, it says that my will, then it goes against the God's will. This conflict is there. So when we want to go for a ministry, when we want to have a calling, we want to have our will preference over the God's will, preeminence over the God's will. And that's the reason why many of the time we have to wait unto the Lord and we have to yield and surrender before the Father, God Almighty, that Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And as we surrender our uh, will unto God, then God start preparing us, training us, and bringing us to that situation where we are exposed. And then you are led by the conviction that God is uh, desiring and God is calling you to this particular ministry, uh, either in the vocation or either in the gift or either in the ministry or either in the speciality, that you are going to bring the greatest glory of the Lord because the God strength and God favor is upon you in this ministry. And the second thing that it happens was we had to wait in prayer and fasting. If you read with me in the Psalm chapter 69, verse 6, it says, Let not them that wait upon thee be ashamed. Let not those that seek thee be confounded. So one of God, manly, God person said to me, When we wait in the Lord, he turns on the fire, the fires of trials, the fire of tests, the fire of temptation, all this fire comes up when we wait unto the Lord. And this fire burns up our life. It burns up everything. As a result, we have two things that, re that remain in us. One is that the sins are being cleansed and the selves are being purged away. So our sins and our self, our selfish desire and our selfish will, all are purged away when the trials, tests and temptations burns up in prayer. And second thing is that the God's power begin working in us. And that's where we can uh, go forward for this calling. And the second priority that God gives us when we are waiting for the God's call is to hear his God voice. A vital principle, uh, as always, in confirming our calling is through the word of God. And it has been always when I was assured of my salvation, I prayed and fasted to hear the word of God. The word of God uh, the written word of God and the vocal word of God that constantly speak in the inner voice, in the inner um, quiet moment time. Our heart must be pure and we must be completely yielded before the Lord when we want to hear him. Time and often that we don't get the assurance, we don't get the promises, we don't get the God's word at the very instant of time when we want to hear them. But it takes time when we fast and pray, when we, our faith is developed and when our heart is sanctified when our spirit is sanctified, then the gods begin to speak. And when that God begins to speak, then we can obey in faith and we can see the other scenarios like godly provisions and the circumstances evidence. So it happened in my alcoholic and drug addict ministry. I was working in a department of clinical psychology and a department of psychiatry in one of the regional medical hospitals in Manipur. And I was among the drug addict and alcoholic who used to come for the treatment. But never in my, uh, in my heart or never in my mind, it occurred to me that I can or I should minister with this alcoholic or drug addict people. It happened coincidentally when one of my local uh, brother from, a, from my surrounding, he needed a treatment for his alcohol addiction. I just went out to help him so that he can receive the treatment, the pharmacological medical treatment and the psychological therapy. But as I pursued to help him, uh, it became to something that I felt for him. I had a compassion for him, how he was struggling with his alcoholic life and how the family was ruled. Then as I ministered with him to receive his treatment, but he did not walk out after, uh, after 15 days of de detox, detoxification and then other, uh, another 15 days for uh, staying inside the hospital. When he went back home, he relapsed and he became more worse than before. Then I took a challenge in me that if we could help them out again with the spiritual, uh, with our Christian principle, that if he confess his sin and accept the Lord Jesus Christ, then his life would be transformed because Jesus can deliver him from his addiction. That was my inclination, my institution in my heart 
in my spirit that led me to go back to that brother again. But time and again, I helped him out. I, I reached to his family and I prayed with them, but it was of no use. I was struggling out. And it became, during the time of my uh, doctorate uh, thesis, I felt that I should write my thesis on this alcohol and drug addiction in perspective of a spiritual intervention. Of course, there was a pharmacological intervention was there. There was a psychological intervention was there. Now I want to bring another perspective, which was spiritual intervention, the use of the biblical principle in helping an addict to overcome his addiction. So when I started to work over these tests, I got the God's confirmation that I could pursue for it. And then I talked with my uh, head of department and they all agreed to help me out. And we brought patients from far here and there. We just went out to reach many people who are alcoholics and drug addicts. And we gave it two conditions. One was a control group who want to go only for pharmacological and psychological treatment. And then another group was those who want to go for pharmacological, psychological, and spiritual treatment. And I very uh, clearly spelled out that this spiritual treatment would be on the base of Christian principle that is based on Bible. And uh, by the grace of God, what happened that those who participated in the second group in the spiritual perspective, with spiritual perspective, a holistic approach, they were able to get themselves remain abstinence, deliver from the addiction for more than a year. Whereas those who are not enrolled in this spiritual perspective, they relapsed after one month, three months as they went back home. So I felt that the Lord was leading me to these uh, people, to this uh, section of the society, which was quite neglected rejected by the family, rejected by the society. So uh, God used all the trouble that I experienced during this time to refine me, my own understanding about this ministry and uh, also the grace that the Lord continuously helped me out to have a cooperation from all the medical professional, from the clinical psychology. And with all that, I came to uh, that deep conviction that this is the ministry the Lord has called me. Now I want to share how do we know that we are called for a certain ministry? Whatever with our individual calling of the Lord, how do we know that uh, this is the, actually the Lord's calling that I should serve the Lord in this, in this area or in this section? So it happens to me like uh, if you read to the book of, uh, in the Bible, there were certain experience crises. It happens with the Moses in the burning booth where he has to confirm that, that should he be the one going back to the Egypt to deliver the Israelite from the bondage of slavery. And that was a confrontation that he had in the burning booth. And also we read about the Isaiah in the temple. He said, Lord, send me. He was uh, committing himself to the Lord. And also the Paul on the road of Damascus, where he heard the voice of the Lord, Jesus speaking to him directly. From there on, he started becoming a ministry, uh, reaching out to the uh, Gentiles and the Jews. So, the first and the foremost condition that I felt and I experienced in my life was to be passionate about the very ministry that I am indulged with. So when we are drawn to something uh, which the Paul says uh, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, it says, I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. He had a he had a, a inescapable a growing conviction, a passion that if he do not do what he has uh, doing it or a desire of doing it, then he is not able to rest at all. So it happens that whenever I see the alcoholic or drug addict sometime uh, on the roadside or in the hospital, I used to follow them at a distance to see that if they need a help or assistance or if I could talk to them and I say, brother, do you, do you want a, some sort of help? Can I help you? with your addiction like that. So that was a passion that was growing with these people. So there was a deep conviction leading me that uh, I would reach out to them and speak to them. And if I do not speak to them or if I do not talk to them, I feel a little bit reluctant or there was something that was burning in my heart. So it felt like I should not invest to any other things except to this pe uh, section of people who are more rejected by the family and by the community. And I want to share about what is this. This is a deep desire. and an appetite that spring from the vision commuting with the knowledge. When we read a two verse from the Bible, um, I would like to share from Hoshea chapter four, verse six, it says, 
my people are destroyed by the lack of knowledge in Hosea chapter 4 it says because uh, knowledge itself has no power but the application of the knowledge indeed or does brings an effective resolution because the uh, knowledge itself doing something and doing nothing but when we apply the knowledge it has some significant effect and again in the verse Proverbs 29 18 as we are all familiar where there is no vision the people perish so vision is a light a revelation from God and that is where we are supposed to head so when we combine these two verse the knowledge and the vision and combining the, the, these two verse it brings a deep desire in us so the vision was in my heart that I should reach out to this alcoholic and the knowledge of how I minister with this kinds of uh, addicted people was another thing that was uh, adding my doctorate thesis that helped me out to see the certain spiritual perspective where uh, the desire was burning in my heart. So when uh, people know that through the hearing or through the knowledge of the word of God, there comes faith. But often, always we have so many promises of God we have from the Bible. We have the knowledge of many certain promises that God has given up. But why do not we fulfill those promises in us is because we lack that deep desire. So I would uh, share my part that desire was a very important. Being passionate is very important. So if you read with me from the Mark chapter 11, verse 24, it says, Therefore, and then it comes like, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believed, when ye receive, uh, that ye receive them, and they ye shall have them. It says that when we see that our praying and our believing and our receiving all spring from our desiring, then it comes to a blessing. So the first and foremost important step that was the passion that was growing in my heart, in my soul, in my spirit for these people that I could not do without. And this is where I confirmed that this was one of the conviction or calling of God. And second is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, since it is a call of God, we cannot minister uh, with our natural abilities, with our, uh, with our knowledge or with our manual uh, lever. It is something that what God calls us, then he provides us his gift so that we can effectively minister to bring the greatest glory of the Lord. So when we have the evidence of the gift of the Holy Spirit, certain um, miracle activities, certain abilities which are not natural, but which are divine abilities. So when I reach out and talk with many of the alcoholic and drug addict, uh, I, I was not sure that whether I could really lead them to Christ, whether I could help them out to deliver from the addiction. But whenever I minister to them, whenever I speak to them, uh, if I read a, a certain verse from the Bible, like Romans chapter 7, verse 21 on, it says, I want to do good, but I cannot do good. I don't want to do evil, but I still continue to do evil. You are in alcohol addiction because you cannot do good because you are not able to do good because there is sin in you. So in that way, when we share the word of God, the spirit of the Lord was touching their heart. And they said, yes, brother, uh, I have tried many times, but I could not get delivered from this addiction. So there were certain abilities of the Holy Spirit helping me in the way we counsel with these people, share their problems, share their grievances, and also help them to restitute and confess their sin. And at the same time, fight over this addiction in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. So the evidence of the Holy Spirit is a second imminent factor if, if when we are called for the ministry to get confirmed that if I have the gift in this particular ministry, God is using us. And then another thing is the, is the availability of the opportunity. Being stationed in a hospital, uh, there are a lot of opportunity now. And now wherever I am in the surgery department or in other department, the alcoholics and drug addicts comes with accidents, with the, mi with the minor injuries or with major injuries. Suddenly or the other, I have everywhere, every opportunity in my colony, wherever I move around and in certain places where the, these alcohols and uh, vendors are there. So we have that uh, imminent opportunity provided by the Lord so that I can reach out to them and share out to them and help uh, in their needs. So if there is no opportunity in your calling, then we can doubt that whether it's really the call of God, should I minister here? Because there is no opportunity where I can uh, bring, the growth, uh, bring the glory of the Lord or minister with these people. And the last, which is the most important factor, is the blessing. So when we are moving forward in the call of God, we see, uh, we wait, 
and we want to analyze that whether our ministry is a blessing or not. Suppose in, in my ministry, I had about this alcoholic and drug addict, and I've been seeing around the people that I've been ministering to them with the word of God, helping out in their medical treatment and helping them with many things to, uh, to resolve among the family, between the husband and wife and between their children. It has been a blessing to the family. I see that through the husband uh, delivered from the alcohol addiction, the wife comes to the Lord, the mother comes to the Lord, and then the whole family give their life to the Lord. And I see that the God's bringing that blessing upon those people whom the ministry is reaching out. So it's something that we can be assured, we can be confirmed that it is a call of the God. Otherwise, wherever we minister, if there is not such blessing, if there is no such uh, issues that we find that God is not helping us to see that any fruits or a blessing comes from that particular uh, ministry, then we can surely doubt and we can reconsider and pray to the Lord whether the Spirit of the Lord will lead us to that ministry or not. So in the conclusion, I want to share that sometimes why can't we find God's calling in our life? Is it because we are self-defining our calling it happens to me as, as always that I want to define my calling. I want to say, Lord, I want to do a Bible Institute ministry or Lord, I want to do um, a certain other creative ministry like ha having a televisions and preaching programs, something like that. We want to define our own calling. But uh, in a very good sense, it is not the created being like man or us to know the calling because it is not our knowledge that why we are here, why we was uh, ever born or ever, ever come to this world. But it is only the God, the Father, who has formed you and who has ordained you is the one who can reveal you the purpose why you are here. If you read with me in the book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, it says, Before I form you in your womb, in, in your mother womb, I knew you, it says in the book of Jeremiah. Before you are born, I sanctify you. I ordain you as a prophet to the nation. So the Father God Almighty, before the foundation of this world, before you are even conceived in, our, in your mother womb, God has ordained you, God has sanctified you for the purpose that he has desired for you, for he has predestined for you. So uh, we are never to have our self-defined calling in our own uh, presumption in our own convenience. It is for the gods to decide. It is for the gods to reveal unto us that what would be the appropriate ministry, what would be the appropriate calling where we can venture to bring the greatest glory of the Lord. And uh, one of the things that we need to remember is that when we intend to go forward, when we put the pressures on our life to fulfill a purpose where God did not intend for our life. Suppose I've been laboring in other areas of uh, my uh, uh, professions, and I believe that that is not the God intention for my life. That is not the God purpose for my life. But still, I pursue that uh, a calling, or I pursue that profession, a ministry. I feel that I should be going out. But time and again, I become frustrated. Time and again, I'm stressed out, and I feel like a failure, and sometimes I'm quite defeated. It's because Outside the God purpose, your life has no meaning. My, my life has no meaning because whenever I walk outside the purpose of God, outside the will of God, the life has no significance. And whatever I do has no meaning for the eternity also. So it is very important that we have to seek the God's calling in our life so that uh, by His grace and by His divine enabling power that we may be fruitful and bring the greatest glory of the Lord. So if it is the God's will, again, to fulfill his purpose in our life, all that you have to do is to completely surrender your heart and uh, let the Spirit of the Lord lead you, guide you to his purpose so that we may find the right calling of the Lord and our life be blessed. And, uh, and finally, I want to share from you that if we are fulfilling the kingdom ministry, your presence will impact and influence for the greater cause, for the greater glory. God has called me in the various professions in my life. And I see that many of my people, my brothers in the Lord also called for different profession. Uh, last time when we were traveling to a hill area, there was with me one police officer and I was a person from the hospital uh, staff. And our one of the reverends and brothers uh, from other senior servants from other churches, they were appreciating that God has 
station you, one in the hospital and another one in the police station so that you're being a God, a godly man, you're being a preacher, you are trying to convey the word of God, the message of the kingdom of God to your colleagues. Like for me, I used to share the word of God to the doctors who are assistant professor, then even one professor, I gifted them a Bible. So I felt that when God has stationed me in this such profession, it is his calling so that I could be a blessing to these people. So when we are in the kingdom business, either in the profession shop, an engineer or a police officer or a teacher or in a business sector or in any professions, in any workshop of our life, if God has stationed you there in his purpose, then you are there to defeat the power of hell so that you may establish the kingdom of God. So it is by the grace of God that today, uh, as many of us are looking forward that we, after the salvation, after the, our previous call for the salvation, now God is calling us for the higher cause. And we need to find where is our calling. And if we find the right place of our calling, then we may be able to bring the greatest glory of the Lord. So uh, I want to uh, share what happens in my life when we walk in the will of God. And God will enable us in all the works of our life with the passion that burns in our heart with the anointing of the Holy Spirit in leading us with the gift of God and also providing us the opportunity to minister upon the people, to reach out to the people where the God has uh, predestined for us to share with them with the word of God and finally to reap the blessing if it is the, in the will of the Lord, if it's in the purpose of the God. So the calling is very important. Uh, right after being called to be saved, to receive the salvation, the next and the higher, more specific calling that God has given us that according to his purpose, according to his grace, that we may individually be able to effectively build up the God's kingdom. So may the word of this God, uh, may the word of this uh, message be a blessing to all the youths so that you may find your calling at this juncture because irrespective of your age, irrespective of who you are, whatever you are, in whatever situation we be, it is a time to seek the Lord in prayer Wait unto him to reveal unto you the very purpose of your calling so that you can fulfill the God purpose of being saved, the God purpose of being created and brought to this earth so that you can walk effectively in his will and be a blessing to many. May the God, Lord, bless each and every one of us in this ministry, in your calling. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, brother.